Scenes from Great Plays. Tonight, The Goose Hangs High by Lewis Beach, as adapted for radio by Howard Teichman, starring Walter Abel. I'm Bernard Ingalls. I don't think we've spoiled our children. We've simply given them the things we felt they should have. Margalo Gilmore. I'm Eunice Ingalls. I think we have the most wonderful children in the world. Right now, we're expecting them home for the holidays. And Ethel Owen. I'm Eunice's mother. My daughter married a perfectly nice person. The only thing we've ever had words about is Lois and Bradley, the children. Always wanting and getting. Oh, their goose hangs high. And here's your host, the distinguished actor-manager, Mr. Walter Hamden. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another transcribed half hour of great scenes from great plays presented on behalf of the Protestant Episcopal Church of your own community and the Episcopal Actors Guild. Now let's raise the curtain on The Goose Hangs High. We pick up Bernard Ingalls as he hurries home from the office one evening. An old friend is calling to him. Bernard! Bern! Hey, Ingalls! What? Oh, no, I didn't hear you. Well, you must be walking in your sleep, man. I've been chasing you for blocks. I was hurrying home. We're expecting the children any minute. Yes, I know. I, I phoned Eunice. I'll bet you're tickled pink to see them, you doting old fool. Yes. Yes, I am. Something wrong, Byrne? You're looking awfully tired. No, I'm fine, No, I just had a hard day, that's all. Uh-huh. How are you making out with uh, the new councilman, Elliot Kimberley? It's getting worse every day. Uh-huh. Still want your job to go as a political plum to one of his friends? He's given me a reprieve on that score. At least for the moment. What's the catch? Kimberly's a social climber, Noel. First, he threatens to fire the girl who's been my secretary for ten years. Then, for allowing me to keep her, he forces me to invite him to the house for dinner. Kimberly invited to your mm-hmm. house? That's not all. He also inferred this afternoon that unless I got him into the country club, my job would be a thing of the past. Now, Byrne, that's what I want to talk to you about. Talk to me about? Yes. You remember when the city first offered you the job of city assessor? Yeah. We gave up the greenhouse on Market Street. That's right. I tried to run it without you, but it was you who had the green thumb. I was just a glorified office manager. Oh, I was pretty resentful. Hey, Byrne. Hmm. How old are you? 54? Why? I'm 57. And I'm beginning to feel tired. The ripest plums have too many young birds pecking at them. What are you trying to say, Noah? Just this. Frederick's nursery is selling out. His place can be had dirt cheap. He's got a nice start at a greenhouse burn. Two houses, 30 by 70. It's a fine spot for two men, a little uh, damaged at the edges, but still good inside. Burn. What do you say? Say? Come in with me. Let's buy it. I can't. Not now. Oh, you've been saying that for 18 years. Byrne, don't you see? This is the chance of a lifetime. You'll still be making a living. You won't make the figure that you're drawing now, but you'll be your own boss, and you won't have to take orders from anybody. I tell you, I can't. I've got bills, responsibilities. I owe it to the children. The children. Oh, I'm sorry, Noel. If you'll excuse me, I have to hurry. Eunice wants me to be home before the children arrive. It's seven o'clock. Brad wrote they were coming on the five o'clock train, Bernard. Do you think something's happened? Maybe we ought to phone the station. Now, we phoned already four times, Eunice. Nothing's happened. They just took a later train, that's all. Don't you agree, Granny? I agree. And as usual, they didn't bother to let you know about it. Oh, I'm sure nothing's happened to the mother. Oh, it just seems so long when you wait. Isn't it funny the way a home almost seems dead when the children are gone from it? (laughs) Well, give yourself a few minutes more, Eunice, and the place will be a madhouse. (laughs) You'll be praying for a little quiet. (laughs) Listen to him. You know you can't wait till they get here, Bernard. Oh, oh, hi, Dad. You need a shave. Hi, everybody. Here, catch, oh, Grant. 
Granny. No, no, oh, don't do it's that. It's only my muff, Granny. Hi, Mom. Lois, we were so worried about you, Watch dear. Watch out for that hat box, Brad. Let me look at you. Oh, what'd you say, Mom? I just want to look at you. Oh. You look lovely, dear. She's thin as a rail. Where's Bradley? Hey, hurry up, Brad. He's bringing in the bags, Granny. And there, there he is now. Well, what about it, Jeff? Your favorite son has come home. Mr. Ingalls, I presume? Hello, son. Hi, uh, Dad, you old rascal. You hard tricks. Bradley, it's so wonderful to see you. You didn't crush my hat box, Brad. Stop worrying about your silly hats. They look better no, crushed. Let me oh. kiss you. Well, sure, Mom, here. Oh. Mm. Now, how about you, Granny? You want a kiss, too? No, I'll do without Oh, you will. Oh, watch out for my hair, you idiot. You can't turn down a Bradley, Mother. <laughs> I see I can did you say the house was too quiet, Eunice? Oh, I made a mistake. Lois, Lois, how do you like your new house on the campus? What, Mother? Your mother asked how you liked the more expensive house you moved into at college. Oh, oh, it's well, Mom, it's smooth. Say, Dad, did I write you about the car one of the fellas at school is selling? No, you I'm didn't, son. I'm just crazy son. about oh, it. Oh, it's a swell oh. buy, Dad. I got a picture of it. I'm very you. glad, dear. I was wondering you didn't say in your letters. I guess I forgot, Mom. I get pretty busy up there sometimes. Oh, I know, dear, and I feel dreadful about bothering you for letters all the time, but I guess it's because I never went away to school myself. That's why I try to... We'll live it all through you. Oh, school swell, Mom. Say, Brad, huh? do you think this dress will do for the shindig? Well, sure it will. I said not to change. I'm going as I am. Going where? What shindig? Oh, some of the kids from school were meeting at one of the kids' houses. Hey, we're a half hour late now. Oh, gosh. Oh, do you mind terribly, Mother, if we skip dinner tonight? We'll make up for it tomorrow. Yeah, Mom, tomorrow we'll let you stuff us with roast ham to your heart's content, okay? Oh, of course. Of course, it's it's okay. Rhoda worked on that dinner all day long. Rhoda's our favorite cook. Tell her we'll eat it tomorrow. Bye, Mom. Bye, Bye again. <laughs> What is it, Rhoda? What's the matter? Well, I just can't take any more of this nervousness, Mr. Ingalls. Fourteen years in this kitchen, and of all the days in the world for the stove to break down. And if I don't get that roast in the oven soon, there won't be any dinner for nobody. Mr. Kimberly, not nobody. A repairman's coming right away, Rhoda. Bradley's gone up to get it. Well, I certainly hope so. Where is Mrs. Ingalls? She should have been back from market an hour ago. She'll be in any minute, Rhoda. Eunice. Eunice, you're dripping wet. I'm all right, Mother. <laughs> Certainly don't sound all right to me. Excuse me, Rhoda. Yes, sir? Eunice. Yes, dear. Oh, look at her, Bernard. <sighs> Walking home in that pouring rain. Couldn't you take a cab? Or did you want to save the money for these dear, considerate <sighs> children? I couldn't find a cab, Mother. Anyway, I'm here, and I bought a beautiful pastry for Mr. Kimberly. I'm having a tray in my room. Oh, Mother, please, we can't offend Mr. Kimberly. Just wants to boast that he's eaten at the home of a Bradley, that's all. This is the end. This is the very bitter end. What's the matter now, Rhoda? The matter now, Mr. Ingalls? Where's Bradley with that gas man? And how does he expect me to cook a dinner without gas? I told Bradley when he left oh, this Oh, my morning. heavens, Rhoda, I thought that repairman would be here by now. Oh, dear, Bradley must have forgotten. If Bradley's head weren't attached to his the shoulders... The cookies are sitting on the drain board. And a roast. Oh, I never had such a terrible day in my life. Now, don't get upset, Rhoda. Even if the stove's not working, we'll fix up such a dinner as Mr. Kimberly will never forget. Well, I hope so, of course. Now, I'm... don't worry, Bernard. We've got this pastry I brought home, and I'll fix up a nice salad, and we'll get some of that nice Loganbury jam. Mm, that's all I need now. Mom! I don't see why all the fuss about a man we don't want in the house in the first place. In your top drawer, Lois. For Lose. pity's sake, Mother, we've got to be polite to Mr. Kimberly. I've asked the children to be here. Can I have three dollars for a cab, someone? I don't want to get my new hat wet and it's raining like mad. Why don't you take an umbrella? Oh, Granny, you're a quaint old soul and you deserve a great big kiss. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> you're not going out again tonight, are you, Lois? You've been out every night since you've been home. And besides, we're having a dinner party. Oh, bosh to the dinner party. Anyway, you wouldn't call it going out, Dad, not in the strict sense of the word. I mean, you see, I I ran into Mr. Wingate. Wingate's department store? Mm -hmm, the sun. I was in buying stockings, and I just happened to make a comment about their lousy advertising. That's a new low in manners. Oh, he didn't mind a bit, Granny. As a, as a matter of fact, he uh, made me promise we'd have dinner tonight and uh, talk all about advertising and... Uh, Oh, Dad, I'm late now, so can I have those three dollars, please? Mr. Kimberly's coming to dinner, Lois. I asked you to be here. Mr. Kimberly... Oh. Oh, Mr. Kimberly's not coming, Dad. What? Didn't Brad tell you? 
Tell me what? Oh, Mr. Kimberly phoned to make sure what time dinner was, and, and Brad said that in as much as the stove had broken down, he didn't know how soon we could get a gas man. He, he didn't very well see if there was going to be any dinner, and so... And so Brad told him not to come. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Look, can I have that $3, Dad? What? I'm really awfully late. Oh, sure, Lois, sure. Here. Thanks, Lois, Dad, your lamb. Night, folks. Well, thank goodness that man isn't coming, at least. I'll be upstairs, Eunice. Well, that's that. Please try not to be so upset, Bernard. I'll phone Mr. Kimberly in the morning and apologize, and we'll ask him again. You don't understand, Eunice. It, it was very important that nothing go wrong tonight. Well, I'll explain about Bradley and all. It's just a bit of youthful carelessness. It can happen to anybody. Mr. Kimberly will understand. I hope so. I have venerable parents. Don't tell me there's food after all. I thought celery. Crazy about celery. <laughs> Say, I'm starved. Mom, are my white shirt's back from the laundry. Mm -hmm. Chocolate cake. You mind if I scoop? I can fix a salad for you, Bradley, if you're hungry. No, Mom, I haven't got the time. I got a special date. That is, I hope she's special. You hope she's special? Well, I hope she isn't like all the other girls, you know, always thinking about marriage. What's wrong with marriage? Marriage, kids, all the sloppy sentimentality of family life? Not for me, Dad. Uh, hand me that ashtray, will you, Mom, please? I'll spill the ashes if I move. Well, of course, Brad. Oh, thanks, Mom. Look, Dad, take yourself. Now, you're not really a bad guy. Thank you. But look at what happened to you. When you got through high school, you wanted to go into the nursery business. I thought of it. Why didn't you? Well... My father needed me in the store. You see what I mean? Sentimental nonsense. You sacrificed yourself for your father, that old family stuff. Uh-oh, I better run. Uh, Frodo, was the laundry man here yet today? I need a clean shirt. Well, there's nothing like being told by your own son. Oh, Bernard, he didn't mean anything, dear. Oh, I know. He's young, he doesn't understand. Yes, When yes. he gets older, he'll realize. I know, Eunice, I know. Why don't we do something gay tonight? The dinner's ruined anyway. So why don't we go to a good movie? I'll run upstairs and get my hat. I think I'd rather stay home tonight, Eunice, if you don't mind. I feel a little tired. All right. Then I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go upstairs and help Brad get off to his date. Then you and I can have the house all to ourselves. And we'll play a hand of honeymoon bridge like we used to in the old days. Remember? Oh. All right, dear. I'll let you rest. <laughs> Kimberly. Yes, Kimberly. Kimberly, I... Th I want to talk on. to you, Ingalls. Come on in. I thought... I'm terribly sorry about dinner tonight. I didn't know until about a half hour ago that Bradley... Um, Ingalls, who do you think you are? What? You thought you were being clever, didn't you? Stove broken down, no gas man available. <laughs> you thought I'd crawl into a corner and die because an Ingalls had played me for a sucker. You thought you'd laugh about it with your blue blood friends at the country club. Well, you won't, pal. You put your foot in it this time. You put your foot in it and you can't pull it out. What are you talking about? Who do you think you're working for, Ingalls? The city. No, you're not. You're working for me, Ingalls. Councilman Elliot L. Kimberly. I'm the guy who's going to run the city. So you'd better get in line. You scurry around tomorrow and get me that nomination at the club or you'll be running around without a job. Now, look here, Kimberly. I'm not going to let you... You don't have to let me do a thing, Ingalls. Nobody has to. I just do it. And, oh, uh, by the way, before I came over here, I phoned your secretary and fired her. What? You heard me, Ingalls. That girl I wanted in will be at your office tomorrow morning. Just a minute, Kimberly. Sure. Got something to say? You bet I have. Shoot. I'm sick of you, Kimberly. Sick of the slimy, tricky methods you use. Sick of the way you're running this town. Sick of everything. Most of all, sick of your face and my job. So beginning right now, you can have both of them, Kimberly. Oh, that's fine. You quitting? As of this minute. <laughs> Thanks, Ingalls. That's just what I've been waiting for. Good night. <laughs> I 
still can't believe it, Lois. I just can't believe that Dad could have lost his job like that. He didn't lose it, Brad. He quit. You heard what Granny said last night just as well as I did. He, he quit, and then he was horror-struck at what he'd done. I, oh, well. I guess there's no turning back now. Kimberly must have been riding him awful hard to make him do a thing like that. Yeah. Oh, things would break this way. What do you mean by that? Well, if he hasn't any job, he can't pay our bills. No bills means no college. I thought we went through all that last night. You're not going to back down now, are you? Brad Ingalls, if you don't... All right, all right, all right. Did you do what you said you were going to this morning? Of course I did. Did you? Mm Mm-hmm. And how'd it work out? Fine. Yours? Oak. Then what are we standing here for? Let's go in and talk to her. Who talks first, Brad? You or I? You start, Lois. Then I follow up with the more gruesome details. You all set? All set. Go on, knock on the door. Uh-huh. Hello? Good morning, Granny. May we come in? Of course, Joe. Good morning, Gran. Good morning, Bradley. You two skipped out bright and early this morning. Uh, we, uh, we had some business to take care of. Important business. I see. Uh, as a matter of fact, Granny, that's why we're here now. We, uh, we... Something we wanted to discuss with you. Oh? Uh, Granny, uh... Now that Dad has lost his job, what do you think his chances are? I mean, I mean, what do you what do you think is ahead for him? The poorhouse. Oh no, the husband of a Bradley in the poorhouse. Oh, Granny, the disgrace. Better the poorhouse than a lot of rumors tramping over my carpets. Do you know what your mother has done? She's put an ad in the paper saying we have rooms for rent. She has. I bet a lot of people would like to move in. Maybe we can ask Elliot Kimberly. Lois Ingalls, how can you even suggest such a thing? Now, if this is your idea of a joke... Oh, no, 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 it's not, Granny. Uh, <clears throat> we've, um, we've come to discuss Dad's problem with you, see. We've heard of an opening. Another job. Yeah. The salary's not too high to start with, but... Oh, Dad can work his way up, and and it is steady. What sort of a job? Milk delivery for the Fleischer Farms. Milk delivery for the... What are you talking about? Oh, it isn't a sure thing yet, but we we think we can swing it with influence. Of course, Dad's age is against him. Dad's 53. 54. That's even worse, and and the big concerns don't really want men his age anymore. But if if you talk to Mr. Fleischer, Lois says you know him. You went to school with Mrs. Fleischer, Granny. You told us, remember? Of all the errant nonsense. If you don't think Mr. Fleischer would consider it, Granny. Of course, Dad would look a little odd in the Fleischer uniforms. Well, um, Granny, if you don't think Mr. Fleischer would consider it, then, uh... There's another lead we found out about. Yeah, the sandwich man's job at Hinkle's Ice Cream Parlor is open. The guy cut his thumb on a clamshell. And we think maybe if Mother trained Dad in the kitchen a few days oh, first... Oh, you're mad. The two of you stark raving mad. Well, you don't think Dad can make the grade? Why, well, better if Mother showed Dad how to make sandwiches, he could pick up speed in no well, time. Aren't there any respectable jobs left in this city anymore? For young men, Granny. Oh, Dad wouldn't mind about those jobs, Granny. Dad doesn't have your pride. And he'll feel he has to do something and... Of course, if we could manage to swing some kind of uh, investment for him in a nice, respectable little business... Respectable little business. Well, I've got some money. Have you really? Not much. Was going to your father and mother when I went on and then to you someday. Though lately I've been thinking of leaving it all to charity. Granny, we have a secret for you. Granny, um, did you, uh, um... Well, um, have... Have you ever thought of dying, Granny? What? Oh, no, no, I, I mean that, that, that you're going to die someday. Well, do you call that a secret, or am I being told that you're going to poison me? No, no, no. You see, what we mean is, well, since it's going to be Mother and Dad someday anyway... When I get through with it. Yeah, well, what we meant is, why don't you give it to them now? They need it terribly just now, Granny. So they can send you back to college. Oh, no. no! I see it all now. I give them the money so you can go We're back to college. We're not going back to college, Granny. We've made other plans. But they'll still spend it on you. No, no, you can fix it so they can't. I can? You know Noel Derby, Granny. You trust him, don't you? Of course I know Noel. His father was here even before mine. Well, Mr. Derby has an option on Frederick's nursery, a wonderful spot, and he wants Dad to go in with him. How do you know? We saw him this morning, Granny. Just think. Ingalls and Derby Incorporated. Daddy will be an independent businessman. Dad may not like it if you finance him openly, but if you go in with Mr. Derby as a silent partner... And then you could hire Dad to look after your interests. And, oh, don't you see, Granny? It'll be wonderful. Mr. Derby thinks it's a good idea. Of all the impertinent... What do you mean discussing my affairs behind my back? Oh, Granny, Granny, please. Well... Granny. 
Well. You will? But young Derby, I'd better not think this is an act of charity. I can still read the small print on a contract. Of course you can, Granny. Get her hat, Granny. Uh -huh. Mr. Derby's waiting for you in Hinkle's ice cream parlor, Granny. Well, this is the most... I not that hat, you idiot. That's a summer hat. Oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, this one, Granny. Uh, uh, my Fitch coat, Lois. You're not expecting me to sign a contract in my tweed. <laughs> And a bottle of rum. Take a good look at me, Mom. I am liable to be arrested any minute. Bradley, your eye. It is pretty dark, isn't it? Oh, but you ought to see Kimberly's. Kimberly's? Bradley, you didn't have a fight with him. Oh, just a little discussion, Mom. I uh, wanted to bring home a few points. Brad, oh, my baby. Oh, Mom, cut it out. You're choking me. Mom, for Pete's sake, you women. Lois, tell her now before she starts crying. Don't tell me Lois fought Kimberly, too. What is it, Lois? What have you been doing? Nothing, Mom. I just... Oh, I want to tell you this for a long time, Mom, but I, I was scared, too. I, I was afraid you'd be angry, Mom. Well, what is it? I'm not going back to college, Mom. I, I wanted to quit for a long time, but I didn't have the courage, so now today I, I went out this morning and I got a job. Lois! I'm going to write advertising copy for Mr. Wingate. Mr. Wingate hired you. If you think that's good, listen to this for luck. I've got a job at the Little Theater. It's a swell opportunity. I was studying scene design in college, wasn't I? Well, here I can help the scene painter, and they promised me a chance at some sets myself. I can send the photographs to New York. Gosh, there's no telling what this will lead well, to. Well, I won't let you do this. I tell you that you I will... miss the most wonderful news. Wait till you hear. Burn, where have you been? You've had me worried. We have some news for you, Dad. I've got my job. Job then. Lois and I... What? The consul wouldn't accept my resignation. Kimberly was outvoted. Oh, by the way, he came in with the biggest black eye, said he fell. Anyway, Brad, you and Lois can go back to school and... What's the matter with you all? Can any of you say anything? You might at least congratulate Oh, me. Dad. Oh, Dad. Eunice, what's got into everybody? Have they all suddenly lost their wits? Do you realize what I've said? I've got my job back. Everything is all right again. Dad, I'm not going back to college. What's that? What's that you say? Lois took a job this morning, Dad, and so did I. We're not going back to college. Now, just wait a moment, children. There's nothing to wait for. I'm not going back. But, Bradley... If Lois wants to, it's okay with me. Oh, really? You're a girl. Well, I'm not going Lois. back either. Both of you are. That's right, Eunice. We, we are, are not. not. We're not. You... Quiet. Goodness, Bernard. Quiet. I'm still head of this house. Atta boy, Dad. Lois, you're going back to college. That's telling her, Dad. And as for you, Bradley, telephone the people who hired you and tell them you're resigning. But, Dad... I won't go back. As long as I'm head of this family, I shall take the responsibility for this family's welfare. I have my job back, and we will all pick up where we left off. But, Father, would Quiet! you... Quiet! Your father is speaking. Don't see that that's anything to shout about. I've signed on the dotted line, Bradley. Lois, give your grandmother a chair. Sure, Granny. You came just in time, Granny. Dad's ruining everything. In time for what? What's he talking about, Mother? My whole family seems suddenly to have gone insane. We're in business together, Bernard. What are you talking about? Noel Derby and I have bought Frederick's nursery, and I've engaged you to look after my interests. Mother! Oh, what wonderful news. I'll pay you a salary, Bernard. Not much at first, but maybe someday I'll sell out to you. I won't accept that. Dad! I will not let my family sacrifice. Bernard! Yes, Eunice? If you go back to City Hall, Bernard, I'll leave you. Eunice! Eunice. Oh, my gosh! I mean every word of it. I will no longer have you put up with that nonsense at City Hall. Either you take Mother's offer or, or I'll pack my bags. Be sure to take the silver coffee spoons, Eunice. But... The children, Eunice. Their education. I need the experience in the theater, Dad. Oh, writing copies a break for me, Dad. Don't you see? Bernard, they're such wonderful children. All right, all right. None of that sentimental bosh. Now get on with the matter at hand. What are you going to do, Bernard? What do you say, Eunice? You know what I say, darling. Well, then I guess it's all settled. If you kids are willing to give up college... The least I can do is to give up my job at City Hall. Gee, Dad, that's great. Well, don't see why you children shouldn't follow the courses you choose. I knew you'd take advantage of this opportunity, Bernard. Well, I've waited years for it. Now, perhaps, I can really help the children. Oh, you've always helped us, Dad. A bit too willingly, if I know anything. Ah, uh, not always. 
There have been times when I've complained and worried the way a lot of men do. I guess raising a family is not a question of making sacrifices the way Eunice and I used to think. I guess it's more a matter of getting together and taking care of our problem before it takes care of us. In tonight's warmly human yet sharply penetrating play, it took a serious crisis in the fortunes of the Ingalls family to show them the way to real living happiness. When Bernard the father lost his job, it was then, and only then, that his children, Bradley and Lois, forgot snobbish material considerations and discovered the joy that comes from helping their parents rather than just depending on them. Of course, the Ingalls' parents themselves were mainly responsible for the selfishness of their children. Like so many fathers and mothers, they did far more harm than good by insisting that their children have the best of everything. For whenever that best is measured only in material things, it can easily be worthless. Yes, the best in clothes, playthings, and schools may even be dangerous, unless children are also given the kind of training that develops a sound sense of Christian values. Of course, one of the best ways for either parents or children to develop a sound set of living values is to make sure those values are founded on faith in God and in the great basic principles of the Christian religion. That is why millions already know the inner strength and security, as well as the family harmony, that comes from sound Christian training and membership in the church. And that is also why every child should attend Sunday school and why young people at home or away at school should attend church regularly. If you are not already a member of some church, you certainly owe it to yourself and to your family to discover just how much a church and an experienced clergyman may be able to help you. Of course, you are always welcome at your nearest Episcopal church, and its clergyman is ready and eager to meet and talk with you to explain to you what the Episcopal Church stands for and how it offers you a faith to live by in these trying times. Why not decide right now to visit your nearest Episcopal Church at morning services next Sunday? I want to thank our cast, and especially you, Walter Abel, Margot Gilmore, and Ethel Owen, for your delightful performances. Next week, friends, the families of the Protestant Episcopal Church of your own community and the Episcopal Actors Guild will present Sidney Kingsley's highly dramatic play, The World We Make. Our guest will be the gifted star of stage and screen, Miss Jessica Tandy. I hope you will join us. Music for tonight's transcribed program was composed and conducted by Nathan Kroll. Now, an invitation from the church. The rector of your nearest Episcopal church will be happy to have you join his parish family. Why not attend church this coming Sunday and speak to him after the service? If you're not familiar with the location of your nearest Episcopal